McHenry County prosecutors today laying out the red flags they say child welfare workers ignored in the month before five year old AJ Fred was murdered by his mother. Two former DCFS workers are now on trial charged with mishandling his case. CBS 2's Andrew Ramos has been monitoring the trial and is live now in our newsroom. Andrew. Well, Joe and Erica, day two of the trial for ex-DCFS workers, Carlos Acosta and Andrew Pollivan, zeroed in on department protocol. What was followed and what prosecutors say was completely disregarded by those workers in proceedings also had a rocky start as both sides debated on what protocol was relevant. And for certain... Whoa, 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 whoa. I am not suggesting... A contentious start to the day where prosecutors and defense attorneys debated over the issue of protocol and procedures at the state's Department of Children and Family Services in terms of what was in effect before and after the murder of five-year-old A.J. Friend, who was killed by his mother, Joanne Cunningham, and then later buried by his father, Andrew Friend Sr., near the family's home in Crystal Lake in April 2019. Those procedures and how they were implemented at the heart of this trial, where former DCFS workers Carlos Acosta and Andrew Pollivan stand accused of mishandling the case that resulted in the death of the child. What I intend to do is fix the problem. After a recess that lasted four hours, court proceedings finally continued. Carol Rosica, a former DCFS supervisor dubbed an expert on department protocol, was questioned on a variety of procedures. The prosecution highlighted the paper trail of medical records belonging to the victim's mother that outlined substance abuse and mental health issues that were accessible to the defendants. Uh, based on your review of the C sequence, any effort made to acquire the Sundance methadone no. records. And when it came to interviewing the child, Rosica was critical of Acosta's handling. He doesn't explore anything with the child. It's very, in my opinion, superficial. He's not utilizing any of his clinical skills. But defense attorneys maintained that the former DCFS workers followed procedures and both had limited information at the time when protective custody of the child lapsed, resulting him to go back to his mother's custody. Now, the cross-examination of the former DCFS supervisor is expected to continue Wednesday morning. Both Acosta and Pollivan have pleaded not guilty to the charges. Reporting from the newsroom, I'm Andrew Ramos, CBS2 News. All right, Andrew, thank you.